we're attempting to answer a very important question. Why does God allow suffering? The first reason we've talked about is because suffering forces us to depend on God. Another reason that God allows suffering is because suffering shows us the value of God's grace. Sometimes we think that grace was just something way back when, way back when we got saved. It was grace that brought about the forgiveness of our sins. But we forget that God's grace is active right now, present tense. I want to read another quote from the Apostle Paul, who you could say was, like I said, an expert on suffering. He had this thing called a thorn in the flesh. Have you ever heard about a thorn in the flesh? There, there have been all kinds of speculation and, and ideas about what exactly was this thorn? What, what really was this thorn? Was it a real thorn? Was, was it a physical ailment? Something that maybe was a chronic condition? Was it maybe his eyesight? Was it psychological or spiritual ailments? Was it attached to his past? Remember, Paul was responsible for killing Christians before he met Christ. Maybe their faces kept flashing through his mind. Maybe it was depression. Maybe it was a past relationship gone bad. Uh, could it have been an ongoing temptation from a bodily desire? And, and talk about the cancel culture. Paul was enemy number one for both those inside and outside of the church. I'm really glad that we don't know what it was. Because the fact that we don't know what it was makes it apply to whatever problem that you're going through. Think about a thorn in the flesh. Think about a splinter under your fingernail. Think about something that's causing you constant pain. You're thinking about it all the time, like a headache or migraine, a toothache, torn ligaments in your knee, a fractured bone that shoots pain every time you bump it. Some agonizing experience that when you go to bed at night, that's all you're thinking about. When you wake up in the middle of the night, that's what captivates your thoughts. And when you get up the next morning, that's the one thing that you say, it's there. It's not going away. I'm going to have to do something about it. That's a thorn in the flesh. Let's see what Paul did about this thorn. We read about it in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness, meaning your weakness, my weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now, you and I respond the same way when we go through trouble. Just like the Apostle Paul, we pray, Lord, take it away. Lord, please take away the pain. Heavenly Father, please, please take it away. Sometimes we wonder why he doesn't take it away. And the reason he doesn't take it away is because he wants us to realize how valuable his grace and power is. That way, we don't depend upon ourselves, but we value his grace. So a God allows suffering to cause us to depend upon him. And he also allows suffering to show us the value of his grace. And God also allows suffering because suffering connects us with the pain and suffering of Jesus. Now, you would agree, I'm sure, that for every marriage, it's important that the bride and groom be compatible. In fact, one of the grounds for divorce that everybody seems to be using today is incompatibility. Brides and grooms need to be compatible. Well, our bridegroom, spiritually speaking, is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the bride, the church. God is just trying to get the church, the bride of Christ, compatible for the bridegroom. The bridegroom suffered a lot, didn't he? Just think about all the ways that he suffered. He suffered rejection. He suffered loneliness. He suffered betrayal. And he suffered physical pain. All the kinds of suffering he experienced, we are going to experience. In fact, if you read what Paul writes in the third chapter of Philippians, he says, I want to know Christ. I like that. Yes, I want to know Christ too. 
and the power of his resurrection. I like that. Yes, I want to know and experience the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Now, wait just a minute. Why did he have to go and say that? I don't like that at all. And becoming like him in his death. I don't like that either. Back when I used to disciple teenagers, I remember we were discussing a lesson on God's will. And this is what the lesson said is God's will for everyone, for you and me. It's God's will that you be saved, sanctified, spirit-filled, serving, and suffering. Some folks think the Christian life is like ordering a hamburger at In-N-Out or a fast food restaurant. I want a hamburger, but hold the pickles and the onions. Some people say, I want the Christian life. I want forgiveness of sin. I want a home in heaven and my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but hold the suffering. Hold the being conformed to his death. I'll pass on those. No. When you accept Jesus, you get the full meal deal, and sometimes it even seems like it's supersized. How do I connect with his sufferings when I suffer? And we'll attempt to answer that next time. Thank you, Lord, for what you're teaching us about suffering. Lord, that we suffer so that we can depend upon you. You want us to depend upon you because we can't do it by ourselves. And you also want us to understand the need we have for your grace. We need that grace every day because, Lord, many times we seem to forget about grace in our lives and the need for it on a daily basis. And I pray, Lord, that as we continue to learn how you want us to connect to you through our suffering, that we'll have eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts and minds to understand, and that we would apply as we learn in Jesus' name. Let there be light. Open the eyes of the blind. Purify our hearts in your fire. Breathe in us, we pray. Jesus, have your way.